Hello and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. After going unbeaten in their first 15 games, RIT's dream of an undefeated season came to an end following a 3 1 loss to rival SUNY Plattsburgh. The second ranked Tigers return to home ice, hoping to get back on track in a weekend series against Buff State. First period, Tigers on the power play. Christina Moss's shot is stopped, but Tanisha Hiller is there to put home the rebound. For 11th goal in the year, Tigers led two zip after one. Second period, off the turnover, the Tigers with a two on one advantage. Hannah Epstein to Megan Kobar for the goal. Tigers took game one, 5 2. Front and a goal! Beautiful pass to Megan Kobar. For some hockey here tonight at the Ritter. How about game two between the Tigers and Bengals? First period tied at one. RIT on the power play. Kim Schlotman puts home the loose puck for her eighth goal of the season. It was 2 1 Tigers after one. In the second, Tigers short handed, but it didn't matter. Kim Schlotman rifles one through for her second goal of the day. RIT takes game two, 6 1. With six skaters on the ice. Well, you may have noticed that the women's hockey team was not wearing their traditional home jerseys against Buffalo State. As Olivia Androsa discovered, the Tigers traded in their black and orange for camouflage in hopes of honoring and empowering America's armed forces. As the RIT women's hockey team faces off against ECAC West rival Buffalo State, they do so supporting another great cause. Having blacked out Ritter Arena last year in a fight against heart disease, this year the Lady Tigers will be wearing camouflage jerseys in order to pay tribute to the United States Armed Forces and raise money for the Wounded Warriors Project. The Wounded Warriors Project, there are actually several of them, uh, dozens of them throughout the country, but they're uh, organized to, to support the troops who come back who are suffering from some anomaly, physically or mentally, and uh, we want to make sure that they get treated well with the right kinds of support systems. We're uh, supporting them uh, with the sale of camouflage jerseys tonight, and I looked at the uh, website, and they're up to $300, $350. So in the end, we'll end up, uh, I think, our IT women's hockey team, thanks to Scott McDonald, the coach, will end up donating about $5,000 to the Wounded Warriors to help these folks when they get back home. It started off last year after our blackout game where we want to kind of, uh, you know, everybody's been doing the, the breast cancer games, the pink games. Um, we thought it was an interesting idea to uh, maybe throw, see if we can come up with a camouflage shirt. We didn't really realize that you could actually do it and um, we found a company that was willing to do it and I thought it turned out great. And uh, we thought if we could pull it off, it'd be a pretty cool thing to see on the ice and um, I think everybody really enjoyed that. RET putting on this event, what does that mean to you personally? Well, I think it's a wonderful tribute to the soldiers who have served our country for so, so many years. And uh, for our current cadets, we're in ROTC programs here and elsewhere. Uh, I think it's a wonderful example of how uh, our student athletes get involved in community service. Uh, I don't see anything not to like about it. I think it's a, a great kind of kind of humbling to see, you know, hey, RIT, our campus really supports this, and it's nice, you know, being an ROTC cadet here knowing, hey, my campus supports me. Well, it means a lot because it uh, it shows that the, the people are supporting them, um, that what they did was not for naught, that uh, they care, uh, the people here at RIT, and, and the proceeds will help them um, have a better life or, or improve their quality of life. It's great that they're supporting the armed forces because it, it shows the the respect that you know the nation has for for what what they do and it's great to see that some people are uh, paying respect to that I don't think we could ever do enough to recognize and support the people who put on choose to put on the uniform and serve our country put themselves in harm's way often they sacrifice a great deal and therefore we should really I think be more assertive in trying to support them when they come home do you think it's different going into a game that has such a great cause behind it of course, we were all we were all really excited to play. We were in the locker room, got dressed, looked at each other, like, "Wow, we look great. We're ready to go." Yeah, it puts a little bit more meaning behind uh, behind the game. You know, you're you're playing a, a tough team, and they always play you hard. And um, you know, you put a cause and you put a, a camouflage shirt with the American flag on your on your shirt, and it brings the your, your level of intensity up a little bit. Um, and you don't want to disappoint any of the veterans or any of the soldiers. Or and we had a lot of cadets from RIT here in the stands tonight. And, you certainly want to put an effort out there where it's not disappointing to them because they're willing to sacrifice a lot for this country and uh, this is our way of you know, giving back just a little bit. So supporting the Wounded Warriors, what does that say about RIT and the community? I think it says that uh, we have our values straight 
uh, that we know what's important and we know the kind of sacrifice that wounded warriors make. The team auctioned off their jerseys following the game, with Christina Moss receiving the highest bid of $3,000. In total, the Tigers raised over $8,600 to benefit the Wounded Warrior Project. While still ahead on Sports Zone, one former Tiger will say goodbye to RIT, while another returns to Rochester as a pro. You're watching RIT Sports Zone in high definition. Welcome back to Sports Zone. The RIT women's hockey team hopes to once again be playing deep into the month of March. But when their season does finally come to an end, they'll lose a key part of their coaching staff. Jared DeMichael, who joined Coach Scott McDonald's staff as a volunteer assistant in November, will leave RIT to become an assistant coach of the new Division III men's hockey program at Nazareth College. While Jared DeMichael decided to give up his pro career to begin coaching, some of his former RIT teammates are still pursuing their pro hockey dreams. Melissa Bromley has the story. Former RIT Tiger Dan Ringwald returned to the Blue Cross Arena playing with the Oklahoma City Barons of the AHL. Friends and family came out to support his return to Rochester. Who are you here to watch tonight? Dan Ringwald. What was it like coming back to Rochester and playing in a building with so many memories? Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty special environment for me. Um, a lot of, like I talked about earlier today, positive and negative memories. Um, we had our last game of the season here a few times, and as a senior, you know, winning the championship was a special moment for me. So, um, you know, I tried to stay focused on this game, but you can't help but have some of those memories kind of jump in the back of your mind. What has life been like playing in the minors for you? It's difficult and it's a learning experience for sure and I think I got kind of the, the instant wake up call when I turned pro so I think I've come a long way um, since turning pro and you know you just try to approach every day as a new one, um, try to keep improving your game and, and hopefully I can keep progressing up, to, up the ladder. How do you feel being his mother and all? He's transitioned from the college life to now his hockey career. College was a lot easier for him. It's been really hard because he's been up and down so many times. It's, not, it's hard for him not knowing where he's going to be living. It's hard for him when he wakes up in the morning knowing if he's going to be in Oklahoma City or if he's going to be in Stockton because they send you back so quickly up and down. Um, but we've just told him that he's just got to keep working his butt off like he's always done and things will work out. you got to realize that it's a long season. Um, I think in college that one of the differences is, you know, you can – with a 35, 40 game season, um, your body's always feeling good. You always have plenty of rest. Um, in pro, you have to learn to play with a sore body, um, mentally tired, physically tired. And, and, you know, one of the things that comes from that is that you're going to have bad nights and you're going to have good nights. And the important thing is to just kind of shake it off early and, um, and approach the next game with a new mental attitude and a fresh focus. And what do you need to do to personally further yourself and further your career? I think it's just personal fundamentals, uh, work on my skating, my shooting, being a little more physical. Um, I think I've come a long way as far as my mental approach to the game and I think I can, I can still improve there. Um, you know, as you get to higher levels, it becomes more of a mental, the mental difference than the physical ones. I mean, everyone at this level can shoot, pass and skate um, and it just becomes, you know, that competitiveness and resilient effort and things like that that separate guys from the NHL and AHL and also from the AHL and East Coast League. Now, what was it like playing in this building, knowing you had some family, knowing that there were some former RIT fans here? What was that like for you? Yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, I didn't realize how many people were here until I heard uh, my name announced and got some booze from the Rochester fans and then uh, some cheers from former RIT fans and some local people. So the guys on the team were giving it to me a bit, but uh, it was fun and it was, it was good to hear. What's it like coming out and supporting a former RIT player? Well, it's, it's pretty cool. Definitely coming out here to Rochester where it's kind of a home away from home and uh, see a little bit more energy out there from Dan. Uh, he definitely feels a lot, a lot more comfortable. This is where he lives in the off season, so it's, it's pretty exciting for us to come and see him play a professional game here, that's for sure. Well, it's amazing because we've got so many friends that have come here today to the rink, and it's just fun to see how he's progressed, and we're really, really proud of him. In the future, where do you see yourself? 
there's so many things I want to do, like both with hockey and outside of hockey. So, you know, for now I'm just kind of working on developing as a player and as a person, and and hopefully I can, you know, be in the AHL next year. Uh, my goal is to stay here, and then who knows down the road um, if I can keep progressing. Obviously, NHL is the ultimate goal, or possibly Europe um, for a few years. So, just leaving things open and and trying to enjoy myself while I'm here. During his first two seasons at RIT, Justin Heisek spent the majority of his time watching and waiting for an opportunity to prove himself. Well, last season, the wait was finally over, and Heisek emerged into one of the team's go-to guys. Recently, Gene Battaglia caught up with the Tigers' leading scorer and discovered Heisek might have an opportunity to play beyond college. Four, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, Justin, you know it's uh, your senior year, but a lot of a lot of change this year. How's it going here with the new league? So far? Um, I don't know. We were pretty excited to go in. You know, we uh, we knew it was a it was a change in academic wise for the schools and uh, athletically. So we were pretty excited because it's a lot of good teams here. But uh, we're just trying to play. You know, every game you just play it like like you've been playing for the past 15 years, 16 years for some of these guys. So. Just go in every game, you know. You filled in that role nicely last year. I mean, but that was pretty much your expectation, right? Well, yeah. Coach, uh, coach talked to me about uh, where he wanted to play me last year. He played me at the four spot a lot, and this year with um, we had a lot of big guys coming up. He wanted to put me at the three. So um, in the off season, I just worked a lot of my ball handling, worked a lot of my shooting, and I've been fortunate enough to where um, I've been playing well, I've been putting up some pretty good numbers. So. Justin has just taken off. Uh, had, a, had a very fine year last year. He was kind of a catch and shoot player at the four spot, and he rebounded well for us. But we needed better rebounding. Uh, we should be doing it. That's an area we need to do a better job. Not in his, not necessarily his case, um, but we moved harder to four instead of five, and, and, and uh, Justin to three, so we could get uh, a three man at least uh, try to get a better rebounding situation. Now at the three spot. He's had to develop that over the summer uh, to be a better ball handler from the three spot. Um, we, uh, he's, he wanted to uh, adapt to that, and uh, he's done a very fine job with it. Justin, you've always been a leader on this team. Do you feel like you've had to even take that role more this year? Um, I mean, we, not really. I mean, if, I feel like we have, we have a solid team. Everybody kind of picks each other up. Um, it being named a captain, is, it, it's great, but we, we have a lot, like I said, we have a lot of people. We all pick each other up. If one person's having a bad game or if one person's down, there's a lot of people on the team that can just step up. And it's not so much the same person every night. It's different people. So I, we have the freshman guard, um, Dez, who came in. He's been playing really well. And he's, um, he's got a good head on his shoulders. So I like playing with him. It's, uh, that's kind of like the storyline with the team this year. We have a lot of young guys. A lot of young guys, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's been good. It's been good. I mean. I've been trying to take, like I said, Dez has been playing really well. Sean Sweeney's been stepping up a lot. And I'm just trying to take them under my wing, you know, and, and trying to explain them a, a little veteran side to the, to the game, you know. Um, like, both, like I said, both of them have been playing really well. They stepped into some big shoes. We lost uh, Nate Krenchek last year, who was an extremely well point guard. Um, he, was, he had the ability to handle the ball and distribute the ball, and they stepped in some big shoes, but they're, um, they're playing well. They're coming together, so. As the beginning, the focus that this is it. You know? Yeah, it's um, <laughs> barring a trip to Europe or whatever. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, well it's funny you say that. There was um, I got a letter to get it. It was an invite to try out. So who knows where it, where life takes you. The letter was an invitation to a camp in New Hampshire. It's a two-day camp. Um, I believe Brendan Harder also got the letter, and we were thinking about bunking together and going to try out. But it's basically a tryout, two-day camp, and they have scouts from overseas that come and watch you play. And if you have a good camp. Who knows, you might get an offer and they might ask you to come play. So, like I said, it's who knows where I'm going to go. If, if I play well and I get an offer, then I might be in Germany somewhere, I might be in Italy, but you never know where you're going to go. It's a life experience. One of my neighbors back home said, you only live once, so it's a life experience, you know. Playing professionally wasn't even in my mind. I just wanted to finish school, you know. I'm 50 or going to be 50 year next year, so I'm like, I just want to finish school and get out. But um, 
I actually have relatives over in Germany, so I thought maybe, you know, if I get an offer for Germany, I'll just call my grandma up and say, hey, I'm going to live with you for a month, so we'll see how it goes. I get letters every year, and, and uh, I guess it is common uh, for certain players to, to get those invites, and whether it's just throwing a net out there and seeing maybe a diamond in the rough. I've seen, you know, there's a number of players, ex Division three players from this area are playing over there. Can they play overseas? Depends upon what they're looking for in Europe. I mean, they always want, usually guards are a dime a dozen, uh, but the big, uh, you know, the big strong kid, uh, you know, has a better shot. But it, it's coming down, you know, last 14 games, it's like, wow, this is, this is it. I've been playing since I was six years old, and this is it. This is the last 14 games, so. That's, uh, they need big men overseas, so at least you got back <laughs> yeah. home for you. We'll so. see. Like I said, wherever i got to finish up school. I still have a year here, so we'll see where it goes. Justin Tyson. The Excellus Fitness Center at RIT is committed to helping the entire campus live a healthier life. In the fall, a program was designed to provide professional physical fitness evaluations that lead to the creation of individual exercise programs. I took the challenge to find out just how fit I am. Now, I may not be the most athletic person in the world, but I'm going to have my physical fitness assessed by the director of the fitness lab, Bill Brewer, and his colleague, Sean McArdle, today in the new fitness lab, which is located on campus in the Student Life Center. Now, can you just tell me a little bit about this program? Sure. We'll assess the five major parameters of fitness, including your aerobic capacity, your muscle strength, muscle endurance, flexibility, and body composition. And the first thing I'm going to do is check your blood pressure. Put this around. 118 over 78. So what's a good blood pressure? What do you want well, it to be? Well, 120 over 80 is about normal, so okay. you're just a couple of points below both of those. So you're right in there. Our next assessment is a measure of body composition. And I'm going to use this little tool. It's called a skin fold caliper. And I'll be taking measurements on your tricep, a couple on your abs, and one on your leg. All right, Shelby, our next assessment is going to be strength. And so we'll be taking some measures in the fitness center using some of the weight equipment that we have there. So what you're going to start off with is just the bar, and the bar here weighs 45 pounds. We'll see how many you can do just kind of to warm up and to kind of gauge how strenuous that is. Every couple of times you do a couple of reps, we'll let you rest for a second, we'll add some more weight. The end goal is to get to a point where you can only complete one repetition. Your effort of 45 pounds put you in that below average category. If you were to um, bench press 75 pounds, that would bring you up right on average for that category. Awesome job. So what's next? All right, so next we're going to use this sled machine uh, to complete a leg press. Push it up. The pull. main reason to have high strength is to have a high metabolic function. And when we have low physical mass, that can have an, an impact upon the body's composition. So we just finished the leg press, so now where are we going? So now we're going to go back in the fitness lab to finish your other measurements. Our next measure after doing strength in the fitness center is now we're going to measure your muscular endurance. Okay. The ability for your muscles to continue to generate energy uh, through some relatively intense activities. Okay. You're going to be doing what's called a modified push-up, so you'll be doing it on your knees. And then we have this little device here that will help us uh, count your push-ups for you. Very okay. good job on those push-ups. <laughs> Our Thank next you. will be a measure of flexibility, okay. where we're going to be measuring the flexibility of your back and your hips and your legs mm -hmm. through a sit and reach mechanism. Now, Shelby, what you'll do is you'll bend forward at your waist, you'll come off the wall, push this little thing as far forward as you can, you get two tries. Okay. All right, Shelby, good job on that flexibility <laughs> measures. And what we're going to do now is another measure of muscular endurance, this time for your abdomen. And we're going to do some sit-ups. You have one minute to do as many as you can. Okay. What you're about to, to do now is an aerobic capacity test. Okay. You'll be walking on the treadmill. Uh, the computer here will be controlling the treadmill. And there's different speeds and grades that you'll uh, follow. The first speed is rather slow, and the speed gets faster mm -hmm. each subsequent grade. Okay. 
will be watching your heart rate response to this and you'll also be telling me how this feels by referring to this perceived exertion scale and that way we have a common understanding of how you feel throughout the task. At this point where you've kind of started into this stage, how would you rate yourself on our perceived exertion scale? Probably a five. Okay, good. So what, what we'll do now is we'll take the data and we plug that into our software. That wasn't too bad. No. Plus you see each area that we measured represented there. Clearly your flexibility is your highest score. Your score being as high as it was really reflects not only a great capacity for your joint to go through its range of motion, but that the surrounding muscle tissue is very elastic and very pliable. And that contributed to the very, very impressive score that you had on that measure. I mean, you're a healthy, fit young woman, but in terms of your physical performance, there are certainly some areas where that capacity could, could be enhanced. Having looked at the data that we have in the assessment, I would suggest not a weight loss program, but a strength building program. We could even customize one, something that would allow you to follow a regular and consistent pattern of exercise that would address those issues, but more importantly, raise your fitness, make you feel stronger, make you feel more energetic with the VO2 max rise, and that's really the, the, the bottom line of it. The Excellus Fitness Evaluation takes an hour and costs $50 for RIT students and $75 for RIT faculty and staff. If you'd like more information, visit rit.edu slash health sciences slash fitness lab. Well, that does it for yet another edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.